what is going on guys and welcome to another video and today we're going to be breaking down why phoenix has a 49.59 percent win rate a pretty underrated hero this meta and i honestly did not remember that phoenix was actually a hero it used to be a hero in my hero pool a very long time ago i used to play a lot of phoenix back in the day but it's been a really long time since i went back and looked at this hero but this was recommended by one of my subscribers so if you guys do want to see a hero being featured definitely let me know in the comments and i will definitely do my best to make that happen happen hopefully you guys do enjoy the video so phoenix is either a support or an offlaner and a very situational mid hero i've been seeing this hero pop up here and there in some immortal matches and i've been just really surprised i'm like what is the whole purpose of actually playing mid phoenix so i actually have not tried the mid phoenix i definitely don't play phoenix well enough to actually bring him to the mid lane but i did watch a lot of players do it and i can see the amount of damage this hero is actually pumping out now it's a very slow hero to actually start you don't farm super fast you can actually take stocks pretty decently with your fire spirits it's not terrible but you're not the fastest farmer out there. It is a pretty decent cooldown on your spells, but if you do get that farm and you're able to get that radiance unlocked, this hero feels like an absolute menace. And that's because you're fast at dying light. It means you deal 4.5% of your missing HP as magic damage in a 450 AOE. So you're gonna be quite tanky when you're playing as a core. So you're gonna be building items like heart, double bracer, items like this to keep you topped up all the time. That means you're gonna be doing a ton of damage because you have so much HP and in a long team fight where you're missing a lot of HP you're going to be doing a lot of AoE damage and guess what most of the heroes that you're facing up against are melee heroes you're going to be doing even more damage now you need to be prepared obviously you need to be in a, in a 450 AoE that's not a lot so you need to be in melee range of a lot of heroes which could potentially pose a threat to you you're not the tankiest hero out there but you aren't super squishy either and you always have supernova just kind of to get that reset going and it could easily turn a team fight if you manage to use supernova properly it could be the spell that wins you guys the team fight or loses you the team fight because Aghanim Scepter kind of briefs your team most of the time if you don't know how to use it properly. I typically am pretty fearful of using the Aghanim Scepter to save an ally unless it's just absolutely necessary because they're going to die no matter what then it's kind of worth the risk but if you have a full HP carry just hitting and you go and bring them into the supernova it just feels so bad it's such a grief it's it actually happened in pro league not long ago I think it was last year where it ended up happening happening as a misclick it felt pretty brutal because that was pretty much the only way that they could actually kill the carry and pretty much phoenix assisted with the death of his own carry that was pretty funny and that's what i mean by getting the aghanim scepter can be a little bit grief but if you know what you're doing on phoenix and definitely don't fear that and it's also very good for the extra attacks it takes to break through supernova so if you are facing up against a team that can deal with supernova it is a pretty beneficial aghanim scepter now let's break down the build so basically for support phoenix you're going to be running tranquil boots into a wand then you're going to go for Vessel, you're going to get a Veil of Discord, and your Aghanim Scepter eventually. That's pretty much your build. You can get a Refresher, you can get a Hex. I typically like to go Hex. It's pretty fun to go Hex. You can Icarus Dive into a straight up Hex. You can get a Yule Scepter as well. There's a lot of items you can pick up on Phoenix, but the standard kit is going to be that Vessel and the Tranquil Boots, as mostly all your abilities cost HP, so you're going to be needing that Tranquil Boots to keep you topped up, especially when you're a support. When you're core, you could definitely get treads if need be, but I'd still get tranquils. Even as a mid laner or an off laner, I think tranquils is just the best way to go. You don't benefit a whole lot from having an item like treads because you're not going to be right clicking a lot. You're going to be doing just tons of tons of magic damage. That's what you're going to be playing around. You're not going to be playing a whole lot around actual right clicks. That's not what you're all about. So the skill build is going to typically be max fire spirits. And then I usually like to take two points into Icarus Dive, two points into Sunray. A lot of people don't like to use Sunray. I I always like to use sunray not only do you get to heal your allies you also get to do some damage and against very tanky heroes you're going to be doing even more damage to them so it's always going to feel really nice to have this ability i see a lot of players though that completely skip sunray and i can see the point in that icarus dive having a lower cooldown is always going to be more beneficial to you as you're going to have more escape tools and some games it will be necessary for you to have those extra few seconds for you to have that icarus dive up rather than having the sunray which makes you a pretty much sitting duck they can be pretty hard so you need to pick and choose your abilities correctly but every single time you're going to be maxing fire spirits it's your best way to farm it's also your best way to do damage and it's also your best way to kind of save yourself from supernova as it's going to slow their attack speed so much that you're going to be quite fine most of the time if they don't have a dispel some of the 
best and worst matchups for Phoenix is going to be Night Stalker, Axe, Tiny, Wraith King, and Phantom Assassin. These matchups are some of your best matchups. You do very well. Obviously, if they have a BKB, your slows aren't going to do a whole lot. If you place your Supernova properly, it's going to make these enemy heroes who don't have a lot of mobility, it's going to make their life pretty miserable for them to reach Supernova. They're going to either completely disengage the team fight and pretty much lose or abandon the teammate that they left behind. And it's usually going to put you in a pretty good situation. You can always catch people off guard using dive and hex. It's one of my favorite things to use. You can also go back for a Shiva's guard as well. But these matchups are typically pretty good for you. Some of the bad matchups are obviously heroes with a lot of attack speed. Heroes like Lina, Snapfire, Meepo, Arc Warden, Juggernaut. These types of heroes that can easily just cut through you, that can become quite problematic. Snapfire, since its inception, it's been able to take care of Supernova. So make sure Snapfire is either banned or just not going to be picked. You can still play against the Snapfire. You're just not going to be as good with the Supernova. You're going to be forced to get your Aghanim Scepter and pretty much ask your team for extra protection and make sure for them to take out the Snapfire first because then you're not going to be doing a whole lot. It's just a very tough hero to go up against. And Lina, same thing. Lina just pops BKB and just starts wailing into the egg. There's not a whole lot you can do about that. It's just very difficult. All these matchups are quite brutal. Basically, any hero that does... A lot of right click has a lot of attack speed is going to be very problematic for the egg but you're not all about the egg you have the sun ray that does quite a bit of damage it also can get your team out of a sticky situation with a lot of healing and then you have your icarus die for some chip damage because it doesn't do a whole lot of damage but it is pretty decent and you're able to get that extra mobility to, to get out of sticky situations hopefully you guys did enjoy the video let me know what you guys think about phoenix in the comments below and if you guys do play mid phoenix let me know what's the best build for mid phoenix because i know the whole radio build is really nice and then you go back for a shivas that's honestly really nice but i feel like something along the lines of a heart with that radiance would just pair up much better it is a bit greedier but having a heart on phoenix is always going to feel great it's going to make you do even more damage because you have more hp to play with and that's just my opinion let me know in the comments below what do you guys think i will see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching